Amen. Today we find ourselves in Holiness Revival Movement, Bauchi. And we pray the Lord will bless the people in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet and worship the Lord. Give thanks to him for granting us the privilege to be before him for his eternal world. Let his name be exalted. Let his name be praised. Thank you, Father. I'm so grateful for the encouragement you are giving to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I'm grateful. You led us to the book of Exodus to tell your children that you are able to keep them. That despite the noise of Pharaoh and the Egyptians, the attitude of Pharaoh, the traits of the Egyptians, the oppressions your children were passing through, that you are able to deliver them. And truly, as it is written down in history, scriptural history, you delivered your children from Pharaoh. We saw how it ended with him. He was drowned in the Red Sea. His armies perished with him. You delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And took them to the promised land. And so, Father, you are assuring the Christians in Nigeria and other parts of the world that you are their Savior. That they should not be afraid. Our eyes are unto you. You will do as you have promised. Now, we thank you, Father, for the word we are going to hear from you. Let us strengthen your children. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. For quite some times now we have been studying the book of Exodus as the Lord led us to give his children strength and confidence to assure his children of his presence and power to deliver them. Today we are considering confidence in God in times of war and rumors of war. Confidence in God in times of war and rumors of war. The Bible tells us we should never be disturbed when we hear of war, when rumors of war come on us. Because some of those rumors will come to show that Christianity will be wiped out. They will come to show, to tell us, to threaten us that our enemies are ready to do this and to do that. Yes. Truly, because the Bible says, when the end time comes, there will be wars and rumors of wars. So whatever we are facing now is part of it. Yes, you are hearing that our enemy 
is planning war against the Christians. The Lord is saying, don't bother about that. Don't bother. Any person that wants to fight the young of the chicken is actually fighting with the mother. Is that so? The young of the chicken are helpless. The mother will protect them in battle against anyone, whether it's a human being, it's a bird, or whatever, telling us anybody that wants to touch the Christians, to fight the Christians, is actually against Jesus he wants to fight. And Jesus is the one that will go forth and contend with that person. And if we know that Jesus is God, then we are sure no plan in heaven or on earth can affect our lives. Amen? Because we are persuaded that nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing underneath the earth can affect our lives. While God liveth. The song that says, Since God is in heaven, I am not afraid. Since God is in heaven, Since Jehovah is in heaven, I am not afraid. Simple. So, don't fear. This time, we are considering Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. Exodus chapter 11. I read verse 1. The scripture says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out, hence all together. God was just being systematic. And what he was doing was not a delay. He was manifesting his power for the world. And for generations to come. So that they will know. That God. He is the Lord. So he dealt. Systematically with Pharaoh. He didn't bother about. The hardness of the heart of Pharaoh. Why? He was interested in it. He revealed that. When they were looking for a king of Egypt, Pharaoh also came forth to get the kingship. And in that uh, drive in his heart, he allowed him. If he didn't want him, he wouldn't have been the one. But he saw his heart that this man is stubborn. This man is evil. This man is wicked. He still gave it to him. Because I need this type of man. Because I will be bringing up my people during his regime. And this type of heart will want to resist me. I will celebrate it. Because I will now have the time. To show the world and the generations to come the power of the living God. It is in this wise the Bible says, I raise you up for this purpose. I raise you up for this purpose. Did God give Pharaoh a stubborn heart? Never. Pharaoh developed it by himself. By his uh, transactions with demons. Maybe also from some people that mentored him. 
he developed that type of heart. So some people will be wondering, how did this president come about? How did this governor come about? God knew and God is interested. God made a way. He wanted such a president to come about, to come up. He wanted such a governor to come up because he will by them demonstrate his power. At the time, they will want to touch his people. He will show the world and the generations to come that he is the living God. And by him, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why he tells his people, stand still, don't fear. Just watch what I will do. Watch what I will do. So don't be afraid. You know, nothing will happen except God allows it. Who is he that speaketh and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Who? Actually, I was wrought with my people. I was angry with my people because they rebelled against me. And I mean to wipe them out. That is why I call on them. Go and punish my people. As I call on Babylon. I said, Nebuchadnezzar, go and punish Judah. Otherwise, who is the Nebuchadnezzar that to come to the, to the inheritance of the Lord? But then, the Bible says in Amos chapter 7, from verse 1 to verse 3, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the later growth, and lo, it was the later growth after the king's mowings. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O oh Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. Let's read verse 3 together. One, two, go. The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, said the Lord. Can you see how God can change his mind? Because of the sins of Israel, he meant to salvation, famine, terrible hunger. But then Amos, who saw the revelation, pleaded with God and said, God, Look at, Jacob is just a small nation. If you allow locusts to eat up all fruits, all food, and they die, well, what's the benefit? Please, stop it. And the Bible says, God changed his mind. I won't do it again. It shall not come to pass. Amen? Again, in verse 4, Thus hath the Lord God shot unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. It devoured the great deep and did eat up a part. Now the Lord brought, the Lord shot Amos and bring him fire, strange fire, to burn up the houses of the people. Deep burning because of their iniquity. And then in verse 6, Verse 5 rather. Then said I, O Lord God, cease, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. If you abandon them to this, who will help them? How can Jacob come up again? If this fire burnt up everything. Let's read verse 6. One, two, go. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, said the Lord God. Can you see that's after the same manner? Because the Christians were stubborn, backslidden. Because they left his holiness. They left the path of truth, immorality everywhere. 
stubbornness everywhere. The ministers never respected him. They committed adultery. They went into drunkenness, into witchcraft, into idolatry. They wasted the house of God. And this is happening everywhere. The Lord says, I will allow our enemies to come in and wipe them out. I know how to protect the few that are mine, but I will wipe out these people. He said it, even he told Moses, come, these people are a stiff-necked people. Leave me alone. I'm going to wipe them out. But after intercession, the tea changed his mind. So God now said, yes, what you are hearing, our enemies saying, the plan you are seeing them doing, I actually called them to come up because I wanted to punish the Christians. But since you people have cried to me, you have pleaded with me, I looked at the lamb again. I said, if I allow these people to do this as I had thought, the, the way they would do it, it would be terrible. Therefore, I have changed my mind. Give thanks to the Lord God Almighty. He has changed his mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has changed his mind. So, he said, this also shall not happen. That plan you are seeing going on shall not happen. All this rumor you are hearing shall not happen. That's why I said, no, go and be at peace. All this one they are going, I have stopped it. It will not happen. Uh -uh. It will take a day now. If Satan has to come in a day to inaugurate it. I will lock up Satan in hell. That inauguration shall not take place. Praise the Lord. This is like the day of the days of Noah. When the Lord sent rain upon the earth. But eventually Noah came up and sacrificed to the Lord. The Lord smelled the sacrifice and said, now I will no more destroy the earth by water. I am going to bring out a rainbow as a sign to you that I will no more destroy the earth with water. In the case of these ones, they are stubborn. The Lord would have signified in various ways. No, I've changed my mind. But they said they would do it on their own. Oh, you will do it on your own. Then it is me and you. Then I will face you in the battle and handle it. That's why he's telling you don't mind those people. I will handle them. Amen? Amen. Do you believe God? Yes. Do you believe in the Lord your God? Yes. Then be peaceful. Now, let's see how it went here. Confidence in God. In times of war and rumors of war. In Exodus chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible is telling us here, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh, and upon Egypt, afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely trust you out hence altogether. Moses, I was the one delaying the matter. It's not Pharaoh. I was just being systematic. I was playing about the matter. <laughs> I said, like a, when a cat gets hold of rat. It doesn't eat it immediately. Have you watched a cat like that? Uh, it will carry the, la the rat, go to an empty place and put the rat and be watching it and allow the rat to run to any direction. Then as it is running, it will go to that direction and wait for him. <laughs> he will do a lot of drama before he starts eating the rat. So that's the drama that God is having with these people. It's about he now said, now... I want to finish the matter. Let's eat up the rat the the right now. I've played enough. One plague more. 
and Pharaoh will set you free and remove his son from you forever. One plague more and you will become master yourself. You will no more pass through oppression in this land. One plague more. Then our enemies will know that you are the son of the living God. You are the daughters of the living God. I will display my power once more. Why are we saying this? It's because the Lord is the man of woe. The Lord is his name. The Lord is the man of woe. Yes. In the book of uh, Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I read verse 3 to verse 11. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host had he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The plan of God is for Pharaoh and his chosen captains. All those people who are making noise, watch what the Lord will do with them. These chosen captains that are backing up Pharaoh in rebellion against the people of Israel, the Lord will handle them. Leave vengeance unto me, I will repay. All this retrenchment they give to you to suffer because you are Christians. You will see what the Lord shall do to them. Yeah. All this position you are being denied, denied of, or removed from because you are a Christian, the Lord shall pay them back. Yeah. This is the Lord. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Verse 5. The deaths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as stone. Yes. Thy right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Praise the Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee thou sentest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the floods stood upright as an heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my loss shall be satisfied upon them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. That's what the enemy was thinking. They are thinking, oh, going around and say, I, I'm, this house shall be my house. Because they don't believe that uh, possession is in heaven, but to them they shall inherit the earth. Many of them will go to the presidential palace and say, ah, this one, we shall, I, I will take it, I will take it. So these enemies are thinking so. We will possess this. We will possess that one. We will possess that one. God will clear them off. Amen. That is what the Lord is saying. My hand shall destroy them. Thou this blow with thy wind and the sea covered them. They sang as lead in the mighty waters. This is God. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who can do like this? They put their trust on gods and magicians. Who can do like this? We are waiting for miracle. We are waiting for wonders. How heaven shall answer them. How the sea shall answer them. How the highway shall answer them. How the beasts of the field shall answer them. 
the Lord of hosts. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Watch, wave, wave that hand. The Lord shall do wonders in Nigeria, in Africa, in the various parts of the earth. The Lord shall do wonders in the countries of our enemies. Wherever there's any plan going on against Christians, the Lord shall do wonders there. Yes. The Lord has the power of war. See what he told Pharaoh. In Exodus chapter 9, verse 13 to 17. Exodus chapter 9 verse 13 to 17 and the Lord said unto Moses rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him thus seeth the Lord God of the Hebrews let my people go that they may serve me for I will at this time send my Plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. That thou mayest know that there is none like me in all all the earth for now i will stretch out my hand the lord is saying that i may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth and in very deed for this cause have i raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. See what the Lord is telling Pharaoh. Go and tell him, I'm going to do, I'm going to affect you personally. There's something said about the date of the cross devised by the Romans it is the most painful death because it is systematic it's different from shooting a man and if he falls down and dies it's more than that he, there is a death spread over him for hours as he is nailed on the cross Every cell passes through the pain. He passes, it centers on his heart. I think next to hellfire, maybe the date of the cross, systematic. So, God, the Lord is a man of war. He knows how to handle a person, to make the judgment total. To make the judgment total is to make it systematic one after another, one after another, one after another. You weary the person, you waste his strength, you make him die gradually. That is what God did to Pharaoh and Egypt. The Lord is a man of war. Amen. He is the Lord of hosts that has all the multitudes of angels and men under him. Even the animals, the living things and non-living things are part of his army. The Lord of hosts. God has everything as part of his army. The sun in the sky is part of his army. So, because by him all things were created and for him all things consist. 
He knows how to use a stone to handle a man. He knows how to use a dog to handle a man. He knows how to use the bait of the air to handle a man. He knows how to use a woman, which means despise, yes, to handle a captain in the war. He knows how to use children to handle a man. He knows how to use various animals and the beasts of the field. He is the Lord of horse. How much he knows how to use human beings to handle a man he wants to judge. So if a man enters into his hand, the Bible says it is a fearful thing to enter into the hand of the angry God. How much more? The angels in heaven. Did not Jesus say, Have I no power to ask the Father to send me 12 legions of angels to handle the situation? God has them. He used just one angel to clear 185,000 people. So, he is the Lord of hosts. Hence, confidence in God in times of war and rumors of war put your confidence in the lord of hosts our confidence is on the lord of hosts he has all the power he has all the people he has all and he has all time time also is an instrument of war time and he knows the right time to handle the enemy he knows the right time. So, this is the Lord. This is the Lord. Yes. And he is with us. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 and 46. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of who? The Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. What shall be the result? Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the horse of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He is the God that has the armies of heaven, the armies of earth. Now, some people will be wondering. Christians that have been in Sokoto, Zamfara, Kebi, Bauchi, and some of these northern states have noticed that even when there is war, there is great tolerance among them. Why? Because the Bible says, where sin does abound, what happens? Grace. Does much more abound. Where the battle is supposed to be hottest, the, the captain sends more army there. So if you see the number of angels that are moving up and down in this your place that you think is critical. That is why, all this why you're still here. The earth is the Lord's and the phone is there all. He knows how to protect you. See, you will be here next year. See, you will be here in the next five years. See, in 10 years you will be here. See, in 20 years you will be here. See, until the rapture. I say until the rapture. Because mighty angels are protecting you. The demons are not able to walk as they want. They will plan it and it will fail. They will plan it and it will fail. This one too has failed. I said this one also has failed. 
Peace be unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's the Lord of hosts. Yes, the God of heaven. Now, the Lord is a man of war. Talks about the strategies of war. He knows them. He knows strategies. How to handle things. He knows the strategies. He's wise. Is he not the one that dropped some fractions in Israel? A small nation like this, they have been struggling over it. It is not, it has not worked. He is now giving attention to Nigeria. He is giving attention to Africa. Where the devil says they will plan against Nigerian Christians, African Christians, and so on. The Lord, the strategic God is waiting for them. This God is too much. Let's worship him and thank him. The Lord is great. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. Amen. Therefore, be confident in God at times like this. In times of war or when you are hearing of war, let your confidence be in God. In the book of Job. Job chapter 5 verse 20. The Bible tells us be confident in your God. He, will know, he knows what to do. Yes. Job 5 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. When there's no food, everybody's hunting for food, you will see your case different. You will have what to eat. Where they say, oh, they are fighting, whatever, or they want to fight, what will he do? He will redeem you from the power of the sword. From the power of the weapon. From the power of the gun. The Lord will save your life. Confidence in God. The man of war. Again in chapter 27. Of Psalm. Verse 1 to verse 3. Psalm 27. Verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible tells us, saying, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's to say, because you have taken the Lord to your side. Don't fear anymore. Don't fear our enemies anymore. Don't fear the witches and wizards anymore. Don't fear Satan anymore. Don't fear kidnappers anymore. Don't fear the assassins anymore. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell this man saw it with his eyes they were really coming to him they start stumbling 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 <laughs> when they came to arrest jesus and jesus asked them what are you coming for they said we're coming for jesus he said i am he they went they stumbled and fell did you remember that scripture or do you remember that scripture they will stumble over your life. Amen. They will fall over your life. Though and host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Pray to come to this point. Christians, pray and come to this point. Let your heart come to this point. It's not only rumor, but they actually gathered. And that it is against you. Pray that your heart. This should be your prayer point. 
have this heart. The psalmist got this heart. Though an horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Peace. War. They encamped against Elisha. His heart didn't fear because he said to his servant, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The heart was not afraid. They actually came down to the city for Elisha. What, did he run away? He said, God, strike them with blindness. They won't see Elisha. So, when he asked them, what are you looking for? Elisha. I said, he's not here. The man you are looking for is not, is not here. He's in Samaria. Is it not the king of Samaria you were looking for? You couldn't get him. That's why you think you will get me. Come, I will take you to the king of Samaria. Now, let's go. They were following Elisha. But they came to that city for Elisha. The Lord shall strike them with blindness. Amen. Your naked neighbors shall not see you. Amen. Amen. So that's what the psalmist is saying. Confidence in God, the man of war. In times of war and rumors of war. In Psalm 46, verse 1 to verse 11. Confidence. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, whatever noise, hey, they have started running in this place. Don't bother about that thing. Stay with God. Stay with they have thrown something into the air. We, had, we saw a light in the air. They said the enemy threw it. Don't bother about those things. Stay with God. Let us even hear that the whole the country is shaking now. Be peaceful, my brother. It's God that says you should be peaceful. Ah. We who have entered aeroplane, praise the Lord. When the, the pilot comes to a troublous place where the aeroplane would start shaking he will announce to us and say everybody be at peace we're going to enter into a storm but be peaceful have you had that before praise <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> yes maybe this one will make some people want to enter aeroplane there may be no storm in your own way <laughs> That is it. Though there is a shaking, be peaceful. The pilot in heaven said, you will pass through safely. Amen. That is what he's saying. He continues. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. There is a place of righteousness. A place of peace. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. And in quiet uh, dwelling places. And it says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that Ride early. Pick this thing. Because you think that God is late. The plans that are going on. The things you are hearing. Where has God not started? Oh, you say God has not started. But to him he has started. But be informed. God will not be late. The salvation of God over this nation shall not come late. No. 
Isaac was not born late, although the delay was for 25 years to human beings. It was at the right time. Because God wanted, allowed the mistake that Sarah and Abraham would do. So that human beings will learn from that, to learn how to wait for God. When they had done their mistake, God waited for Ishmael to grow to an, to an age that he and his mother can trek and leave that house and move back to Egypt. Be, before he would allow Isaac to be born. Who told you Isaac was born late? He made provision for human error. He made provision for final victory and then strike, strike at the right time. So God will not be late. And God shall help her. And that right early, the hidden rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of hosts. The Lord that has all power, all people to fight is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is our protection. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he had made in the earth. Watch it. You will see the works of the Lord among us. Watch it. You will see the work of the Lord in your life. Watch it. You will see the work of the Lord in our country. Amen. You will see the work of the Lord run about in other countries. Amen. Yes. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cut the spear asunder. He breaketh the bow and cut the spear asunder. He burned the chariot in the fire. All the weapons you had have been brought in will be destroyed. Amen. God will destroy them. Amen. God will take away their power. Amen. 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 He knows how to handle the matter. He told you that there is no more war. This shall not happen. He knows how to do it. He will cause this Romo everything to disappear. Amen. There will be peace. Amen. Yes. Be still and know that I am God. It is at this time many shall be converted. Amen. Many people shall enter into the kingdom. Amen. In fact, the wrath of the king shall praise the Lord. The works of the devil shall praise the Lord. Amen. I told a story. Maybe you heard it. I heard the story myself. That demons had meeting together with Satan. And some principalities and powers. Even among men I suppose. And they started regretting. That's many many years ago. They started regretting. They said they brought the sickness HIV AIDS to the world. So that they will cut off the lives of people. Cut off. Cut off. And so people can go to hell faster. But they didn't know. This HIV AIDS became the reason why many people are entering heaven. Heaven is becoming overpopulated to them. They don't know that there are still many mansions. Heaven became populated. Uh -uh. What happened? Our plan fell. What? Because if somebody catches HIV AIDS, he knew I'm going to die, he goes before the Lord, the merciful God, the God that forgives iniquity, that, by <laughs> that pardoned transgression and sin, and said, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry for being a sinner. 
I'm sorry for being stubborn to you. God, forgive me in Jesus' name. I now accept Jesus. Okay, okay, come in, come in. <laughs> God is like, come in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the people are going to heaven. The people are going to heaven. The people are going to heaven. Hey, we miss plan. This plan is to populate heaven. Because there shall be great conversion in this country. Even among our enemies. When the Lord shall show his power, they shall know that the Lord, he is the God. I say the Lord, he is the God. It's evangelistic plan. He that winneth souls is wise. And God is a soul winner. Let's watch it. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, everybody, one, two, go. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Think about this. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 41, I read from verse 9 to verse 13, even to 14. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord said, I made a choice to arrive at you and have just given you assignment and they say you will die. You agree? I just gave you assignment. I made a diligent choice to arrive at you. Esther, King Ahasuerus will be saying, I gathered all women in, uh, in the kingdom of Persia and the Medes to arrive at you to be my queen. And they told you that you will die. You agree? And I am alive. Who, who, who will kill you? Who, who, is, who is that man? Who? Who? Esther said, it is this wicked man. Hey, the king moved round and came back. And before you know, a man was holding the leg of Esther. The anger was too much that he didn't know the man was pleading. He said, you, will hold, you, have, you want to use my wife in my presence? As he was talking like that, they have handled him as somebody caught rat. And said, okay, <laughs> what, will, what, do we, what do we do? King, do you know that he has made a gallows in his house for Mordecai? Go and hang him there. My wife, you say somebody wants to kill you? Here. Yeah. Somebody wants to kill me? And God will just be sitting down like this. Let me tell you a story. Are you ready for the story? Yeah. <laughs> I was sick. We had prayed and prayed and prayed. The sickness was not going. I think it was this time I was Something was irritating my throat. I was coughing. We have tried. We have done this. In the night, no rest. So my wife prayed, prayed, and I become tired. And started crying. <laughs> he said, if you could to find a true preacher. And I, by, I have been able to get your husband that is serving me and pleasing me in the world. And you say, I, should allow, I, I, I will allow him to die. Am I a fool? Kai, no sense in God. No sense in God. The Lord just got a movement. Holiness revival movement. And has just announced the movement to Christianity. And said, I am doing final work. And we have not done anything yet. Have we done anything yet? Uh -uh. Look at this place that is empty. And we are looking for more lands. Is it only even going to be in this place alone? We are spreading to other places. We are not gone yet. And you see the Lord, say, uh, the Lord will allow um, our enemies to kill all of us. Forget that story. I say you should forget. I say you should forget it. That's why he say, Ah, thou 
whom I have taken from the enlistment thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. For um, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Finish. So let's be moving forward. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 18 is talking about the wisdom of God. Wisdom. The, God, the Lord is a man of war. <laughs> the, God, the Lord is a man of wisdom. He will do everything in his wisdom. Chapter 9 verse 18. Bible tells us wisdom is better than weapons of war. Stop there. Wisdom. Oh, let a man gather all instruments of war. What is better than it? Wisdom. Who has wisdom? Who is wisdom? What does he promise us? Simple. So we are on top of those instruments. We are greater than those instruments. We are superior to those instruments. We have overcome all those instruments because of wisdom. And this God will in wisdom deliver his people. So, but let them receive warning. Let them receive warning. In the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 11. Verse 4 to 10. Exodus chapter 11. Verse 4 to verse 10. And Moses said, Thus seeth the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. About midnight will I go forth into the midst of Egypt. He was telling Pharaoh. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon his throne. Even unto the firstborn of his maid servant. That is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. There's something I can pick here. It's very bad to be under a wicked person. It's very bad to be under a hardened criminal. It is very bad to be under a wicked pastor. Because when judgment comes upon him, as it shall certainly come, you that are under him shall suffer it. That is it. Can you see what the Lord is saying? Even animals, even the animals, that are under him shall suffer judgment from God. All of you, your firstborn shall die. Nobody shall go to comfort another because in every house, somebody must die there. So who is going to say, oh, be patient. Uh, God will comfort. Uh, don't worry. Who is going to say, go, don't worry. When there is accident, everybody is lying flat, lying flat. Do you see somebody going around be telling you, hey, be, don't worry, eh? don't worry now. You, have you seen it like that? It's going to be terrible judgment. Why? You didn't hear that that person is a wicked man. Why didn't you change? Why didn't you run away? 
Why didn't you withdraw? You are tempting the Lord. You will fall into his hands. By the way, are you a good person? Are you good? Are you reasonable? If you were reasonable, do you even love your soul? If you were reasonable, why did you not respond? Why did you not show God that, no, I cannot be on the side of the wicked? Why did you not withdraw and run away and say, no, I don't want to be in trouble? I shall serve the Lord. Why didn't you say so? You remain with Pharaoh. With all this judgment, what is fair to with your eye? You see corruption with your eye. You see wickedness with your eye. And you say to me, judgment will sweep you off. Judgment will sweep you off. You are not a reasonable people. You are the field of the society. You are made to be doomed. That's why you put yourself where judgment will meet with you. And clear you off. See it now. And he said it again. Verse 4. And Moses said, Thus seeth the Lord. Here is certainly. Though hands join in hands, the wicked shall not go unpunished. Though sentence against the wicked of against evil is not speedily executed. Though the evil, the wicked does evil ten times and you do not see the judgment seven times and the judgment does not come, shoot. That is what the word of God says. And Moses said, Thou seest the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. No time again. Escape. Time you cannot escape. Judgment overtake you. It might be the judgment of death. No time to repent anymore. Because you are stubborn. You are hardened. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne. That Pharaoh is busting. I have somebody to rule. My firstborn is already ruling with me. It will start from him. It will start from him. Yes. Yeah. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the mid servants. Servants. Hey. Come, did God sell you to Pharaoh? Did God, the Almighty, or did Pharaoh join with God to create you? Why should you be serving the wicked man? Why should you be, be loving somebody that is an enemy of God? Why should you be even smiling and laughing and playing with a, a man that has chosen to be wicked to God in heaven? For that, God is angry with you. Look at it. We're coming back here in the book of Second Chronicles. Chapter 19. Second Chronicles. Chapter 19. Jehoshaphat had gone to the northern kingdom and had made a, a, a kind of a partnership with the king of the northern kingdom that had given themselves to worship of Baal, worship of idols, and have forfeited God, children of Jezebel. And verse Verse 1, and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Hanani, the seer, that's the prophet, went out to meet him and said to king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore, is wrought upon thee from before the Lord. God is angry with you. God is angry with you that you belong to the sight of the wicked to fight God. He would deal with you. Go and stand. Stand firm against God. Let me know which side will win. Let us know. Yes, your own battle is against God. Let's know which side will win. Whether wickedness will win good. 
where the darkness will overcome the light let's watch it they all shall perish the moth shall eat them up that is what the lord is saying but you got here he said nevertheless verse 3 nevertheless there are good things found in thee in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek god well the lord spared you delayed his judgment because there is good thing in your life you are sincerely confused that is why he spared you for this time but take the right action because his patience shall not continue forever let's go back there to exodus chapter 11 exodus chapter 11 verse 6 and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of egypt such as there was none like it nor shall be like it anymore but against any of the children of israel shall no dog move his tongue against man or beast that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. There shall be nothing, nothing shall happen in the camp of the children of Israel. That you should know that God loves you above the Muslims. He loves them as natural creatures. But you specifically, you are serving him. You recognize Jesus as the king of kings, the lord of lords, the coming savior, the one that died for us. And you have believed in his name. You are protected. He will give you honor. He will give you promotion. He will give you attention. He will give you protection. For you are the apple of his eyes. That's what the Lord is saying. Yes. There's a difference. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me. And bow down themselves unto me. Saying, get thee out. And all the people that follow thee. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. Why was Moses angry? Stubbornness of man. It is not the will of God that any should perish. But that all should turn away from their sins and leave. But why has this man been so stubborn? Why has this man been so wicked? That even now, people under him are suffering judgment. Even now, there's still a plan of judgment over not only him, but people under him. Moses was angry. Greatly anger, angry. You know, there are some people, they, they want to see Pastor Smiley and Alton. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> you want Pastor to be smiling even at wickedness? At stubborn people, acts of rebellion that have been hearing the word of God and know they are not bringing forth fruit. Pastor should be laughing and pastor should be playing. What are you talking about? Do you understand God? Some, somebody should hate God. I should be loving him and be laughing. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> have you eaten? What are you talking about? Moses was greatly angry against this wicked man he left that pre his presence with anger yes and the lord said unto moses pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of egypt and moses and aaron did all these wonders before pharaoh and the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Remember, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Means the Lord allows, allowed Pharaoh to remain hardened in his heart. You get that language? 
The Lord allowed Pharaoh to remain hardened in his heart. So in Bible language, since they know that God is the doer of all things, as you see Job said, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Was it the Lord that took away? But he allowed Satan. Job told his wife, what? Have we received good from the hands of the Lord? And shall we not receive evil from him? Was, God that gave, was it God that gave him evil? No. But because they believe that nothing can happen except God allows it. So, it is written in that same way, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. But the actual language in our time is the Lord allowed Pharaoh's heart to remain hardened. Wow! He said, I will show my power. I will judge human beings that the rest of them shall learn lessons. I will judge the wicked that the rest of men shall learn lessons of life. I will judge the, weak, the evil people that the rest of men in the nations of the world shall learn lessons of God. They will know me. They will know me. One scripture more we shall rise up to pray. To show you how this was accomplished in Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. Now I read from verse 7. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the forts. And as soon as they, they who pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were let down, that's the two spies sent by Joshua to Jericho. The Rahab the harlot came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land. And that your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the, the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. Let's read verse 11 together. One, two, go. How did this one come? It was by what God did to Pharaoh. You see the advantage? You see the advantage of crisis? It will speak for our God in generations to come. Yes. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt. And what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites. That were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard this thing, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Conversion to Israelites. They become, they are, we will join you. We will join you and serve God. 
in fact my father my mother my brother my sister oh please promise us that you will not kill us we will join you all because of what they have heard what the lord is doing in your life after the bitter thing the water tastes sweet can you see after all this trade what will follow it is world revival i say world revival all this difficulty we're having to convert our enemies will become easy now because they would have known the power of our God. They would have known the Lord Jesus that he is alive forevermore. He is Lord in heaven above. He is Lord on earth. He is Lord under the earth. And at, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee will must bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. God the Father. So bear this slight affliction. For I say unto you that the light affliction which you are passing through is not worthy to be compared with the glory that, is, that shall follow after. Great, great glory is coming upon Christianity in this nation. Great glory is coming upon Christianity in Africa. Great glory is going to come upon Christianity in this state. Christianity in Nigeria. Christianity everywhere. Because this little thing we are passing through, these little traits, God has allowed them. He will magnify himself by that. The name of Jesus shall be magnified by that. And we shall sing hallelujah, hallelujah, until the rapture will take us rise up upon your feet and worship the lord confidence in god in times of war and rumors of war confidence in god the man of war tell him you believe him tell him you trust him tell him you are sure nothing shall by any means hurt you that he would deliver the believers he would deliver his children worship him Believe the Lord. It shall be well. Believe in Jesus. It shall be well. Thank you, Jesus. Revival is coming. It's starting from Nigeria where the Satan has given attention. The Lord will root him out. Then we shall flow in revival. The ends of the earth shall enter into the revival that is beginning from Nigeria. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. The Lord is going to do wonders in our country. The Lord is going to make our country to be a pillar in the world. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Because great things are coming. And they are going to begin with you. You are the one the Lord is going to use to accomplish it. The Lord will make you a wonder. Because of what God is going to do by our prayers. By the revelation that God has given unto us. Remember the Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Don't be a weakling. Don't be fearful. Stand on your ground. Remain faithful to God. Standing firm for the thing of God. He will do wonders. The Lord will accomplish his plan for this world. And for Nigeria in particular. Then you in particular. And Bauchi as a state in particular. The Lord is visiting us. By his power. Because of the protection, because of the preservation, because of the miracle that is going to perform, the Lord will do it. Join the queue. Join on in faith. Believe God. Stand on the word of God. Stand, believe the man of God. Trust in the man of God. That all the words have told us today will not fall on, nothing will fall on the ground. No word will fall on ground. Open your mouth and pray and pray. Pray and praise God. This is the time to rejoice. This is the time to shout for victory. 
This is the time to stand for the glory of God. This is the time that the Lord is looking for. Let his children raise up. Raise up and declare allegiance to God and his word and his son Jesus Christ. Then he, the minister of God that God has risen up at this time to lead us, to direct us. Praise his holy name. Glorify his holy name. Adore his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to raise up your voice to commit the man of God in his, in his hand. Ask God that God, this man, keep him, preserve him from all forms of sickness and weaknesses of the flesh. Ask God to pour up him. Open your mouth and pray for her. We need her around. We need her. We need her. Through her, God will guide us. Through her, God will direct our ways. Through her, God will make, make her, make us succeed. Make us to overcome. Through her, we will reach our goal. Through her, we will reach our goal. There is a goal that God has set before us. Through her, we will be there. In Jesus' name, name we pray the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of christ righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades revival meetings production and spread of holiness literature and materials for other spiritual materials messages or inquiries contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 6834323 you can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus, I believe in you.
believe in Savior. Jesus, I believe. 